Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Fish Story. That's all there is to it. So now I've got my whole rod set up here. There's one. Oh, that feels good. Yeah, there he is. Got it. Nice. There, I got one. That's awesome. Fourth species. This rod is killing it. How's it going, everybody? Today is the very first episode of Fish Stories. I was getting ready for this. I was thinking about what I was going to do for ice fishing. I didn't really like the rods that I bought last year, so I decided why not make my own rods and see how that works out. So I took apart some of my old long rods and constructed three ice fishing rods. So <clears throat> here's an ultralight that I'm going to use. Medium action. And another kind of medium action, a little bit longer, maybe a little bit heavier for some bigger fish. So before I get started, I'm gonna to cut to a clip of me actually making these rods just to show you how I did it uh, in case you want to do something similar. And then let's get started, let's start fishing. See you in a second. So when I was home recently visiting my family, I was looking through some of my old rods. It seems like everybody's garage has this area where all the rods get collected and so I was home and I thought, why don't I just build my own ice fishing rods? Because I have all these choices. I have 10 or 15 different rods that I'm never going to use again. And I can choose the action that I want and, you know, try to make a, a light, a medium, and maybe even a heavier one light and two mediums or whatever. I'm um, just to try and get different sizes and uh, different actions. Um, so that's what I did. I chose the rod tips that I liked the most. Here's one of those rod tips. I uh, like the length, I like the nice soft tip on it, I thought this might be like a light action setup. And I found reels, um, so I found that for instance this old um, Zebco micro reel from about, I can remember using it about 20 or 25 years ago. Um, and you know I cleaned it up and it's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I found a couple other reels also that I thought would work. I think the most important thing is you want to check and make sure that the drag is functional because if uh, the drag is really key, obviously when, when you're ice fishing, um, if you hook onto the fish of a lifetime and you have that tiny rod in your hand, you need a good drag to be able to play that fish. Uh, and then what I did was I bought uh, cork handles from Mudhole Customs, custom rod building, and then I also bought some of this uh, tape to tape the rod, the reel onto the rod. It's clam silicon pro wrap. Comes in a roll like this. This one's almost empty, but for this rod build, you know, I'm going to need probably about. The, I probably have just enough left here. What is that? A foot and a half or so. So probably about 18 inches to build this rod. So I think I'm going to walk you through it here. It's going to be really quick and easy. So first of all, what do we need? A cork handle. These ones from Mudhole Customs have a hole that it's, it's a nice, probably, I don't know, 1 8 inch, maybe. Uh, and that's going to be perfect because if you look at my, the width of this rod, it's pretty similar. I mean, it's, it's maybe a little bigger and that's ideal because it's, I want it to squeeze in there and go in, but I want it to be a really tight fit. I can use super glue or something else to hold it in place, but in this case, I would like it best if I could just slide it in there and have it be ready to go. So I've got my, uh, I got my cork handle. I've got my rod that is going to be inserted into the cork handle. And it's just, you just want to be careful here, not to damage anything. So that is in place and that looks great. It, it, it's a really snug fit. It's not going to come out. And then all I need to do now is just get my reel, line it up with the guides, of course. Uh, if, if you don't, you can actually, you know, it's, it's pretty tight, but it's loose enough. You can actually spin it a little bit if you don't get the guides perfect. And when you set up your reel, instead of setting it too far forward, you want to set it kind of in the middle or to the back, I would say, so that when you're playing the fish, when you're putting torque on this handle, if you have it all the way up here, 
put too much torque, I could imagine you could break that cork handle right there because these cork handles aren't that strong. So I'm gonna try and center it as much as possible, like maybe like right there. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be perfect. So now I'm just gonna take this silicone wrap and this stuff's really cool. It, it bonds to itself, it's, it's non-adhesive. I'm just gonna get it started and I'm just gonna wrap it tight and stretch it. I'm gonna stretch as much as possible as you're wrapping it on. And that'll help keep it on really nicely there. Just trying to pull as, well, not as hard as I can, but pretty hard. We have it. That's all there is to it. So now I've got my whole rod set up here. You can see how I've got that wrapped on. It's, you know, not the cleanest wrapping job ever. There's some lumps and bumps in there, but that's okay. It'll get smoothed out. And uh, the important thing is that the, just to make sure that that reel is never going to come off. And I don't feel like I could ever get it off of there unless I cut the tape. So I think we're good. Now what I'm going to do is just um, hook this up with my lure of choice. And soon enough, we will take this out on the water and see if we can catch some fish. <clears throat> I have already made two other rods just uh, shortly, a little while ago. I made two other rods with, um, in a similar way, with old rod tips and another old reel. Um, this one's a pretty light action, light to medium action. And the third one that I made, I wanted one that was kind of heavier. The nice thing about this rod tip was it was longer as well. And it also came from a heavier rod. So it's got some backbone. Um, and, it also is longer, so I think that'll be better. That'll help you know, distribute the force from a big fish if I do if I catch a big fish. Also got a heavier reel on here uh, that I found that wasn't being utilized. Um, and see, you can see I've already got these hooked up in, in anticipation of using them. So that's three new rods that we can go use. Across the street from my house, there's a nice little pond where we can put these rods to the test. All right, let's do it. Let me set the stage for you here. Just a tiny little puddle right across the street of my house. Perfect place to check, test out these rods. It is, however, very cold and very windy. Probably looking at about 10 to 15 degrees below zero wind chill. All right, get the ice scrapers on. That's key. All right. All right. a deeper sonar and the readout for that is on my phone which can be problematic because it tends to shut down cold weather so what I've got is I've got something rigged up here where I've got it in a little pack here a little biking pack with some hot hands in behind it and that might keep it on for a little bit longer than than it otherwise would There's one, got it. Nice, oh, that feels heavy. What is that? Feels heavy. 
Oh yeah, there's a bass. Nice. Nice way to start. That's what I'm talking about. Nice little bass. Look at that guy. Look at that little guy. Good little start. See you later. All right. That new rod felt great. I mean, that was that was awesome. I mean, it was perfect. I couldn't have asked for anything more. There's one. Nice. Just let it sit there. He took it. Feels good. Bluegill probably. Yep. Nice little bluegill. Colorful little female. There we go. Look at that guy. That's what's down there staring at me. Let's try something else. Oh man. Let's try the BNC tumbler spoon. Okay, I'm gonna use a VNC tumbler spoon here. And I'm just gonna put a wax worm on each hook. Probably only need one, but I'm gonna use three just to really give them a good reason to come check it out. I'll put the link in the description for this particular spoon. That's one I really like. It, I catch a lot of bass on this, on this one. <coughs> all right, you got fish all over the place down there. I'm recording my sonar feed now, so should be able to see that. There's one. Oh, that feels good. And they're staring right at me. That, that's that's, that's got to be a bass or something. Oh yeah, that's a bass. Play him for a little bit. That's what we came for, boys and girls. Yep, there we go. That's nice. There we go. Ha. All right, and the top. There we go. He's a skinny little guy. He's a really skinny bass, but he's he's probably like 14, maybe 15 inches, but I don't know, maybe longer. He's pretty long. But he's man, he's skinny. Not a very healthy fish. Oh man. Oh, there's something. I'm chasing it back down. It's, I'm right in its face. Right on me. There he is. Fire. Nice. See if we can get him up here. Feels pretty heavy. Another bass. Huh. Ready to come up yet? There he comes. Nice. Another bass. That's a little healthier looking one. Not big, but oh, I love catching bass through the ice. That is so awesome. So awesome. Ah, look at that guy. Look at him. Get these out of here. There, I got one. That feels like a good fish, too. Oh, man, that feels good. Oh, boy. Oh, another bass. Nice. We'll take them all day long, folks. Popped right out. Sweet. That is awesome. About a 10 or 11 inch, maybe. See you later. All right, that is fun. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try the other rod now before I run out of battery on my GoPro. Tungsten, maybe. One of these guys. Never does me wrong. I don't know if I have the dexterity to tie a knot here. All right. I think this thing it's on me. Yep, it's gotta be me. Oh, 
I got him right away. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> and oh man, these rods feel great. Another bass. Look at that. That is awesome. I don't care that they're not very big. We'll take them. Man, I was instant on that little. Look at that guy. Look at that. That guy's kind of chubby. <sighs> Oop, there's one. Nice. Nice. This, this rod feels good. Feels good. It might be another bass. Oh no. That is a green sunfish. Third species of the day. I do like catching those. They are feisty little boogers. Look at that. A nice specimen. Green sunfish. See ya. Oh, there's one. Oh, that feels good. Dude, what do we have here? That feels good. Oh, man. Oh, that's a nice bass. Jeez. That is awesome. Look at that guy. The camera shut off on me. Look at this guy. Nice little 11 inch, maybe. Maybe 12. Oh, there's a fish. Is that a fish? Yeah, I got a fish on. What the heck? I think it was off to the side on me. This feels like another nice fish. Oh man. Another bass. Jeez. <clears throat> All about that same size category, but man, oh man. They are hammering me. Right in the top. Look at that guy. That's a healthy specimen. Not big, but they're fun. I'm gonna get another one of those. Boy, there's a bunch of them down there. They found me. And they are on me. Got him. Nice. That's really good. Feels nice. Bluegill, I think. This is a nice bluegill. Oh man, hybrid. Awesome. Fourth species. Oh man, I'm glad I stuck around for this guy. Look at that guy. That is nice. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that. Green sunfish bluegill hybrid. Woo. Love those things. It's four species. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. One more. Bucket blown over to me. <laughs> 